In this video, I'm going to be starting a new series on CSS effects. Now, this is going to be a series teaching you all about different styles, different sort of effects you can achieve in just CSS with no JavaScript, only CSS. So let's get started with a basic tutorial on outlines. So now we can do some really cool things in outlines, but one thing that I use outlines mainly for is to highlight things in my website. So if, for example, we could do hover effects on a button as you can see we can have here we can also offset this outline to give it a different style effect as you can see here and there's more you can do with just this as well now if we scroll down to this next section you can see we can also do it on images now this just makes it nice so you can actually have official outline around an image that you're looking at it helps focus the uh, person's attention on an element and finally you can do it on titles as well having just a nice sort of hover effect to different things outlines are pretty cool they're quite straightforward but normally people use borders which is actually wrong and i'm going to show you why first thing we're going to do is head into the official studio code where i have a project just opened up here now i'm just going to reveal this index in finer double click it to open up and as you can see here we have the same page uh, but this one does not have any outline effects. Now, if you want the source code for this so you can actually use, uh, actually follow along, the link will be down in the description below. Um, and you can see here the different, well, this one has no hover effects. So that's just a quick overview. We have three different sections with different elements in. We have buttons, images, and also text. You can see here some of our buttons or some of our elements in the different sections have an offset. This is for us to actually add the outline offset to the actual image now if we go back we also have a css this is all linked up again you can get all this code how it is inside of the source code down below and let's just go to the top here so we've just got some basic resets but the main thing we're going to be looking at is how we can style our buttons images and the text so let's go down to the bottom here and we're going to create our button outline effect Right, so now we have a button and on all of our elements, we have a transition of 0 0.2 seconds just to give it that sort of not instantaneous effect. Now we can comment this out just for the start of this, just so I can show you why I'm adding a transition. Um, but let's start off with getting our button and adding a hover effect. Now the hover effect we could use is border. Now I'm gonna use border first, just to show you why you shouldn't use it. So let's actually add in a border, three pixels solid when we hover over our element. So if we go back and we just refresh and we hover, you can actually, oh, we made it white. Sorry, I should make this a dark color. So there you go, you can see. But you might notice it's making things jump around. So you can see here the right and left side are all jumping around. If we made this a little bit bigger as well, you'll be able to see these are just bouncing around and it's kind of annoying. It doesn't really look good. It, you don't want your page cheering like this. That's because border is actually a part of the DOM sort of, um, if we highlight this, I'm gonna show you something again in the console called compute. You can see here, this is the DOM or the elements actual size. Now you can see it goes all the way out to margin and this affects the actual page. Um, and you can see we get border here. Now there's another element in between this called outline, but outline does not affect the actual structure or positioning of any elements. All outline does is actually goes above it. And if there's an element next to this, outline will actually sit above it instead of um, pushing it to the side. So I'm gonna show you why we should use outline next. So let's go back to our tutorial here and change this to outline. Okay, so we now have made this an outline here. And as you can see, nothing is now bouncing around, which is really good. But you can also see this is just, it's snapping on. This is, I actually like this effect, the instant border, especially when you're trying to see images. So if this was for images, I'd actually normally have an instant one. It kind of means when you're going across, it's quite intuitive and quite quick. Um, however, for this effect, I would rather it be transitions. Now, I don't like to have a too long transition. If this was one second, you would see it, it just looks really weird. Um, so I prefer to go for something really quick, like 0.2 of a second. Um, and there you go. You can see this is a much nicer effect you get that huffer here. But there's something else we can do with that. Now we can go down here and we can also say button.offset. 
Now with the offset, we can add an, we can change this to an add an outline offset to this, which will push the outline out a certain amount of pixels or whatever um, unit you're using away from the actual element. Now I'm just gonna say five pixels here because I think that works pretty well. And if we refresh, you can see it now starts about five pixels out, giving this nice sort of spaced effect away from the actual um, element you're hovering over. This is really good if you want to like outline things uh, and actually like show like a circle around. So you can actually use a similar thing here to show it as a like a little highlight. And there you go. And that's just a simple huffer on a button. This is this sync which just works really well. And we can do a similar thing for our images. So if we go down to images, by the way, I'm using Pixum to actually load these images. If I refresh, we'll get different images every time. So let's go for the image outline effect. Now, essentially, we're going to be doing the same thing here. We can copy this, get down here, and we can change this button to be an image tag and same here. However, we want this to be a white effect. And just so you're aware, the images have a transition as well already. Um, so let's go back here, refresh, and there you go. <laughs> this is oddly reminded me of SpongeBob from the water and the pineapple put together there. Just weird coincidence that they appeared together. But now you can see the outline works on our images. It's super easy to implement and it adds so much more depth rather than not doing anything. If this just did nothing when you hovered over it, cool, it's just a piece of eye candy on the page. But when you add interactivity like this, it makes it pop out a lot more on your website. And there you go. You can see this is just a nice little detail there. And again, we've got the offset here, which again works really well there. Now, finally, this one, which is actually not as easy as adding an outline to something. We can't just add an outline to our text because it will add it on the block element, which will be a square or rectangle around the text. So to add an outline style to this, we're going to use something, uh, we're going to use shadows. So back in our code, we're just going to say the text outline effect. Now, this is the one which is going to show you something slightly different you can do with outline, uh, sorry, text shadows or just shadows in general to add outlines to things as well. Um, you can use this for many other things rather than just uh, a text outline. I think it's really cool. So we're going to get our H1, which is actually what we're using in here is a H1. Um, and we are just going to add in a hover effect. So we're just going to say hover like we have for the other ones with a simple hover effect. And now we can say text shadow and we can basically set in different um, type shadow. So let's just start off with one. We're going to say minus two pixels, minus two pixels, zero and FFF. Now that zero is important because it stops it from being a blurry edge and becomes a hard edge. Um, so let's hit save here. Let's go back to this. And if we hover, you can see we get one corner or one side of the hover effect we'll try to get for. So how can we actually get this the whole way around? Well, in text shadow, you can actually add a comma and add separate shadow effects to each one. Now, to make this easier to read, we're just going to break this down like this, comma. And now we can do basically two pixels minus two pixels, zero and FFF. And there you go. You can see we now have it on the top of our page. You can see it works pretty well. It's just at the dead top there. We've got it on the top and the sides, but we need it at the bottom as well. So again, all we have to do is just basically keep going through and we're just going to be changing the um, different things here. So we're going to change this one to be that and, or sorry, non-minus and this one to be minus just to give it moving in different directions. Obviously, this is the X coordinate and this is the Y coordinate of the uh, the shadow um, and then here we could just say finally two pixels two pixels zero fff hit save go back and huffer and there you go you get this huffer effect now this is not perfect you'll see on slanted text you actually get these artifacts coming in here and that's just the nature of how slanted works you're never going to get perfect there um, you could use an svg text instead um, but personally this is quick and easy and no one's really going to know especially normally your titles aren't this big um, so, you know, it's harder to notice on smaller sizes and it looks really good. You can also play around with this. You could actually probably say two pixels here, uh, save, and you'll get some sort of fading effects. You can see on the edge there, it's actually fading. So we can set this to, this is basically the blur on the edges and how much blur we want. 
So now you can see, oh, if we refresh, you can see it's actually more of a blurry outline and more of a glow, in fact, to the elements. You could use it as a glow as well. Um, but if you want a hard edge, you just set this to zero. So starting back from the top, so what we did today is we used outlines to create these simple hovering effects over these different elements. Now you can use these outlines um, outside of hover effect if you wanted. You can use it in just a standard always have images outlined. Um, but yeah, that's pretty awesome. And this is why you use outlines instead of um, uh, borders because this way it won't push out any of your extra content and it'll keep it all in the same place, which is super useful. So guys, that'll be it for this video. If you enjoyed this new start of this new series, and don't forget to leave a thumbs up. It'll no let me know that you like this and you want to see more of it. Let me down know down below in the comments what other effects you want to see in the future. Um, we can do a bunch of ones from image effects to button effects um, to text effects to the whole page effects. You know, we can do everything if you want. Just let me know down below and I will mess around with those effects for you. Um, but that's it for this video, guys. I will see you in the next one. Peace out.